polymers and their role in nanomedicine. Polymers are long molecular chains made up of smaller repeating units and molecules called monomers, held together by covalent bonds. There are lots of ways to make polymers, but let's look at chain growth reactions to see how polyethene is made. First of all, the monomers are just floating around. They need an initiator to start reacting, such as benzyl peroxide. The OO peroxide bond is unstable and can be broken by treating the mixture with UV light. This creates a radical, a molecule with a single, unpaired electron, represented by a dot. The initiator radical reacts with the monomers by attacking a carbon atom in the alkene bond. As with the initiator, the bond breaks via homolytic cleavage, meaning that one electron forms a covalent bond to the initiator on the first carbon, and the second electron remains unpaired on the second carbon of the double bond. The monomer itself has now become a radical, and this radical can continue to react in the same way as during the initiation step, and this continuous addition of monomers to the reactive end of the polymer chain is known as propagation. The reaction ends when the termination step is reached. Two radical chains can react with each other, and the two unpaired electrons can form a carbon-carbon bond, linking both polymers together. Polymer chains can also terminate through disproportionation. Here, a carbon-hydrogen bond is cleaved through the action of a second chain. Polydispersity gives us an idea of the range of lengths of polymer in a sample. A mixture with low polydispersity will contain little deviation in terms of how long the polymers have grown. The lowest possible polydispersity value is 1, where there is only a single length of chain present in the sample. Polydispersity increases as there are more polymers of different lengths in the sample, and also as the difference in length between polymers is greater. Much research has been carried out in terms of measuring and understanding polydispersity. According to Linares and Varios, alterations of the catalyst used in ethylene production will produce different polydispersities. We can see in their work using metal complex catalysts that there is a 31% decrease in polydispersity just from changing the cyclopentadienyl ligand to a pentamethyl cyclopentadienyl ligand. Possible to use polymerization where the polymer doesn't terminate though. In free radical polymerization, the polymers can react with themselves to terminate. In cationic polymerization, self-termination can also occur, which leaves us anionic polymerization, where, in this case, the chain doesn't terminate. For anionic polymerization to occur, a nucleophile has to attack a carbon-carbon double bond. In order for the action to take place, the nucleophile has to be very strong, and there has to be an electron withdrawing group bonded to the carbon of the double bond. Electron withdrawing groups can be either those with minus I inductive effects, usually electronegative atoms, or alternatively, they can be minus M mesomeric effects, such as nitro groups and ester linkages. The reaction to make dermabond, a medical adhesive, involves monomers of two oxal cyanoacrylate. Here, the strong nucleophile is OH minus ions from water molecules in the air and body. The electron withdrawing group bonded to the carbon is an ester bond. This group is able to form resonance structures which stabilize the chain and make it more energetically accessible. The OH minus ions attack the first carbon of the double bond. Here, the cleavage is heterolytic. Both electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond are localised onto the adjacent carbon atom, forming a carbanion. The reaction propagates, and the carbanions now act as nucleophiles, reacting with other cyanoacrylate monomers until they've all been used up. 2 octal cyanoacrylate is extremely effective in halting external bleeding, as it reacts immediately with any water or nucleophile present on the skin to form a seal. A pilot study of using dermabond to treat gastric varices found that immediate halting of bleeding occurs in 100% of cases, and that only 4% of patients experienced a recurrence of bleeding from the same cause within 11 months. However, as only 25 patients were trialled in the study, more work must be done to determine the effectiveness of dermabond to treat internal bleeding. Anionic reactions such as these are said to be living. Their initiation step is much faster than their propagation step. Therefore, all monos begin growth at a similar time, meaning they have a low polydispersity. As the anionic chain doesn't terminate unless an electrophile is added or impurity is present, it's possible to make polymers consisting of blocks of different monomers. When all of monomer A has been used up in the reaction, then monomer B can be added, and the reaction will continue as the carbanions react with new monomers. The result is polymers known as block copolymers. Each of the blocks will retain different properties. For example, amphilic block copolymers have a hydrophobic block, monomers which do not interact with water, and a hydrophilic block, monomers which do interact with water. Therefore, when a sufficient number are placed in water, the polymers undergo self-assembly. The hydrophilic ends of the polymer form an outer shell around the hydrophobic ends. These structures are known as micelles, and are on average 10 to 100 nanometers in diameter. To give you a feeling of scale, 1 nanometer is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, meaning that you could fit a billion nanometers into a single meter. Micelles are in equilibrium with the individual polymer chains known as unimers. Only once a critical micelle concentration, CMC, is reached, do micelles become stable enough to have practical uses in drug delivery. 
Let's look at the real-life example of the drug methotrexate. Methotrexate is an anti-cancer drug and inhibits the production of tetrahydrofolate, a component required for the production of the nucleotide thiamine. Thiamine is used in DNA replication and therefore, with its production inhibited, affected cells are unable to replicate or produce proteins necessary for their survival. Methotrexate acts as a competitive inhibitor to the coenzyme folic acid, where usually the substrate binds to the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase, DHFR. Here, methotrexate occupies the active site of the enzyme. The ideal drug distribution method releases drugs only at the site of infection, limiting the side effects of the drug targeting healthy cells. Thus, when methotrexate is administered, it can be chemically bonded to an amphilic block copolymer. The hydrophilic block is comprised of polyethylene oxide, or PEO, whilst the hydrophobic block comprises of poly 2 hydroxyethyl l aspartamide, abbreviated as PHEA. The hydrophobic methotrexate is bonded via an ester group and spacing unit to the PHEA chain, and thus is encapsulated inside the core of the micelle. Methotrexate is bonded to its unimer via a weak ester bond. When the micelle breaks apart and the unimers are released, a hydrolysis reaction will occur, separating the ester bond into its previous primary alcohol and carboxylic acid groups. By using the self-assembling properties of micelles, we can protect the drugs that are being administered from the immune response of the body. The architecture of cancerous growths assists in the release of drugs at these sites. Naturally, blood vessels forced to grow by the tumours are poorly cleared by a lymphatic system of the body, but it is the method through which debris are removed from the blood. Equally, these blood vessels have defective linings, allowing for micelles to directly diffuse into the adjacent tumours. Overall, this is known as the Enhanced Permeability and Retention Effect, or EPR. This predicts that drug molecules will accumulate around cancerous growths, and as such the concentration of the micelles increases, the equilibrium shifts to favour their dissociation into unimers, where the ester bonds can be hydrolyzed and methotrexate released to affect the cancerous cells. In the case of the PEO PHEA methotrexate ester, it was found that as the number of micelles that were prepared with methotrexate attached to the core increased from 7.4% to 54%, the total amount of methotrexate released within the first three weeks of the trial decreased from 21% to 5%. Therefore, we can see that drug attachment itself has an effect on micelle stability. Current research involves looking at different moderators of drug release. For example, the pH sensitivity of linking groups between block copolymers and active drugs can be engineered to separate due to changes in pH between the blood and intracellular environment. Also, gold and other metal nanoparticles can be used to alter the effects of radiotherapy by enhancing the effect of radiation against localized cancerous cells. If you'd like to learn more about chemistry, then consider picking up a copy of Chemistry Cubed, or alternatively, visiting the following link to see more videos just like this one. Thank you and all the best, James.